Alright, what's up everyone? Welcome to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel. Today we're going to be going over seven common Google AdWords mistakes to avoid. Um, so there's a lot of Google AdWords mistakes you can make because it's such a massive piece of software and such a massive product um, for advertisers. So there's so many different things you can go to. I mean, even just clicking on the settings screen here, you can see all these different things here. Um, there's different, you know, down the left side you have ad groups, ads and extensions, landing pages, keywords, audiences. So I can't cover every single mistake that, you know, you can make within your account, but these are kind of the major mistakes that I see pretty frequently and the things that you should do with your campaigns, really some best practices kind of. So um, let's just get right into it. So the first one is going to be search network campaigns. You have the option of choosing search network, display network, or both. So I could do include Google display network and get rid of the search network. Um, or just search network or just display network or both. Um, what you want to do is just search network because the display network is completely different than the search network. Nobody goes onto the display network and searches anywhere uh, to target your ads. So basically what happens is if I'm targeting the keyword PPC advertising agency um, in the search network, I'll only my ad will only appear when someone goes to Google or a search partner and types that in. On the display network, they're going to try to find websites that match PPC advertising agency. So maybe my ads show up in places that are relevant, but for the most part, I'm not reaching people in real time. I'm not reaching people as they're typing it in. Um, so when you're using a search network campaign, you just want to use search network and search partners um, because it's just the it's just completely different. Display network. Uh, search key or keywords on the display network are contextually based so they're based on the website they're based on you know what the what the website's about what the website content you know entails so with the search network you're only targeting people when they're typing it in and that's kind of what you want to do so um, when you're using search network campaigns only target the search network and search partners um, so that's number one number two is going to be not using negative keywords so as we move into here you can see I have my campaign here newsletter and free ebook so we're trying to target people who are looking for business marketing ideas how to promote your business you know free business ebooks different things like that we're trying to target people who are looking for some ideas on growing their business it's kind of a broad campaign it's not the best campaign but um, one of the main things we need to do is add negative keywords in here um, so if we click on negative keywords you can see we already have some so um, we always upload a list of negative keywords to get started with most of our campaigns and I find that list on this website here so it's techwise.com and it's their 75 negative keywords um, so if you just search a negative keywords list um, this is their uh, article here it's kind of a long URL I'll put it in the video description what we're gonna do is you go to your all-time results or you go to you know last month's results or last week's results and you go into your campaign and keywords and you click on search terms so and you just click on search terms from the drop down and so what it's gonna do is pull up search terms that people have typed in to find your ad so for us we have some pretty good ones here so how to market your small business perfect how to promote your business on online meeting so that doesn't really help me too much um, you know how to promote your MCA business um, so sometimes you might have to Google I'm not sure what MCA business is um, so I'd have to look that up it might be a uh, like a YMCA I, or I'm not sure um, how to use LinkedIn to promote your business so I might want to add LinkedIn as a negative keyword but I'm gonna look at this one up here how to market small business woodwork so my landing page has nothing to do with woodworking it has nothing to do with specific industries so I might want to just add woodwork as a phrase match negative keyword so if I add that as a negative keyword that means that any search that includes woodwork woodworking is not going to show up for my keywords so that's not going to help me too much but maybe I want to add LinkedIn because I don't want people specifically looking for LinkedIn opportunities um, I have a page on my website about LinkedIn strategies so I'd rather them find that page than come to my page and download my free ebook um, so maybe I use LinkedIn as a negative keyword so you come into negative keywords here um, you click the plus sign and I always put my negative keywords in quotes um, so we're just going to do add negative keywords or create new list add to the campaign um, so you could do campaign or ad group level keywords for us LinkedIn will work for the entire campaign so we just put it in quotes so this makes it a phrase match negative keyword so anytime someone types this in um, in any phrase any anything they type into Google if LinkedIn is in that word it's not our ad is not going to show up so we click on save um, so that helps us avoid some some search results that aren't necessarily that relevant I mean the LinkedIn one's not too bad but it's not really what we're looking for I'd rather than find my LinkedIn page uh, for that one so um, just try to you know go through your search keywords if you see search terms um, if you see popular search terms that never convert you want to add those ones right away other search terms you just have to use your discrepancy uh, I could leave it open to LinkedIn uh, but for me it probably doesn't make much sense because landing page has really nothing to do with it 
So our next common error is not optimizing for conversions. Um, so if we come into the conversion section of Google AdWords, um, what you can see here is we can upload some of our different conversions. We can actually optimize for them in Google AdWords with our campaigns. Um, so what you want to do is when you come into your Google AdWords account, you click on the, the icon up here in the top and you click under measurement and conversions. Um, what you can do is add a conversion from your website based on, you know, something someone views, if someone drives a sale, something like that. Uh, you can do conversions on your app. So if someone installs your app, maybe someone's playing a game in your app, uh, whatever it is. Uh, you can install or you can create in phone call conversions. Um, so if someone clicks on your ad and calls you and they're on the phone call for more than two minutes or one minute or something like that, however long it is for your business, you can track those as conversions. And you can also import conversions from Salesforce, Google Google Analytics, Google Firebase, all sorts of different CRM systems. So you can import conversions as well. And the reason you wanna import conversions is because the whole goal of Google AdWords is to optimize for something. If you're running a small business, traffic to your website really doesn't have a ton of value anymore. Um, what you need are conversion actions. You need to drive new customers to your website. You need to increase your email list. You need to drive sales on your pages. Um, so really that's the goal of Google AdWords. If you don't have a specific goal of what you want people to do, if you're just driving traffic to your website, you're driving traffic to your app or something like that and, and nothing's happening, um, you're kind of just wasting your money. So conversions help you optimize for your key performance indicators. So that's the whole reason you want to upload your conversions and optimize for them. So number four now is going to be poor keyword research. So come over here into the Google Keyword Planner. So unfortunately, they're, if we come into the Google Keyword Planner here, they're updating their Google Keyword Planner. We have a pretty popular tutorial on our, on our channel for uh, the, the old keyword planner, but here's their new one. And one of the mistakes I see commonly is people just don't know how to do keyword research or they just don't do it at all. They just type in some keywords they think that people type in or, you know, they target a few keywords that, that really aren't that great. Um, so um, one of the most important things you need to do is do keyword research um, so you can find some of the top keywords that people are targeting. And in addition to keyword research, I never target broad match keywords. I think they're just a big waste of time. Um, you can't really control anything. So if I'm targeting pest control as a broad match keyword, um, then it, what's gonna happen is it's gonna show up for basically all these different types of keywords. So if I type in pest control up here, um, all of these keywords are essentially broad match keywords to what Google AdWords believes. Um, so in the previous example, I show, or for the negative keyword, I showed you a phrase match keyword. Um, so understanding keyword match types is also an important part of keyword research because I see a lot of advertisers just go in, they put in pest control, exterminator, termite control with no brackets, no modifiers, no, you know, no phrase match symbols, anything like that. So understanding keyword match types is really, really important. So if you're interested in some more information about keyword match types, we actually have a video on our channel. So keyword match types in Google AdWords and Bing ads, we'll link to it as well. Here's the URL at the top. Um, but this will help you kind of understand the different match types. There's broad match, modified broad match, phrase max, phrase match and exact match. And the problem is broad match just leaves things wide open and modified broad phrase match and exact match helps you really target down the keywords you're trying to target, send people to the right landing pages and ultimately drive more sales. So uh, keyword match types are really important as well as keyword research, making sure you understand, you know, what the top keywords are. And in addition to that, you also need to set up landing pages for different keywords. So if you're sending, you know, a ton of different keywords all to the same landing page, it's, it starts to all kind of mash together. Someone who's looking for pest control might not be looking for termite control. You know, someone who's looking for rodent control might not be looking for bed bug treatment or exterminator. So there's different options here that you can do. And you want to, you know, kind of categorize everything and understand how keywords work and how to do keyword research. Um, so you can add them to an ad group. Um, and, you know, so they actually match together. Um, obviously, these don't all match together. But maybe you do something like, you know, pest control, pest control services, pest control near me and home pest control. Let's say all four of these we can do. You can add all those to a new ad group, pest control, and then you're targeting them. Um, the main thing is don't use broad match, change it to phrase match or exact match here. Um, maybe you just use phrase match and leave it a little bit open. Um, not a bad idea. So understanding keyword research, understanding keyword match types is, is really important for your success. And just a quick, uh, quick keyword tool I've been using recently that I enjoy. So Neil Patel, uh, probably one of the big one of the biggest people in online marketing there is, um, he has this tool, Uber Suggest. So if you go to neilpatel.com slash Uber Suggest, great keyword research tool here. And they kind of use a lot of, uh, I think they use data from the Google Keyword Planner and I'm not sure where else they use it from. They But they use it from a couple different sources. So you can kind of really get, um, you know, some more keywords for, for your business and things like that. Um, so one of the next errors I see frequently is only testing one bidding strategy or using the wrong bidding strategy. So um, when I create a new campaign, 
there's I either usually use maximize conversions or manual CPC bidding strategies. I like to use manual CPC because it gives me more control and I prefer uh, to set my own bids when I start and kind of test things out and then shift over to more of like automated bid strategies. So all at the top here, these are automated bid strategies. So the two you really want to get to are target CPA and target return on ad spend. Um, but some of the other ones, so maximize clicks, this will help you drive more and more clicks to your website within your budget, but the whole, the negative to this is sometimes your uh, campaign all goes through a few keywords that are the lowest cost to drive clicks to your website. They're not really valuable keywords to your business. Um, so that's why maximize conversions works a little better. With maximize conversions, what Google AdWords is going to try to do is take your campaign and test. So you have 10 ad groups, let's say. They're going to try to get some results from each and every ad group. They're going to try to get some results from each and every keyword. So it might be a little bit costly at first, but the whole goal for them is to try to find, you know, what the most optimal keywords are for your business to drive conversions for your business. Um, so maximize conversions is, is a great uh, bidding strategy for you to use and test. Um, I like to use manual CPC a lot because I, I could use the keyword planner, uh, as we showed in the previous step, and kind of find my own you know bids for each keyword you can see here they kind of range between about five and eight dollars uh, for the low page bids and then the top range are pretty damn high um, so what I would do is probably set my bids around four to five dollars to start um, and then just kind of go from there and increase them as I go um, so bidding strategies are so important and we're gonna kind of go over target CPA and target return on ad spend later in the video but they're the most important thing for bidding strategies now, one thing I don't really use is target search page location or target out ranking share. Um, this really, I only recommend for if you're like highly competitive industry and you're one of the leaders in that industry, then targeting out ranking share is not a bad idea because let's say you're Expedia and you want to outrank uh, booking.com. Maybe you do target out ranking share and just say, you know what, we're going to spend an unlimited amount of money and just try to outrank them because that's what drives us, you know, new travel clients or new people to buy travel from us. So um, bidding strategies are really important to understand. We also have uh, tutorials on our channel for bidding strategies, um, but you really want to test different bidding strategies and ultimately you want to get it, get to target CPA or target return on ad spend here, um, but we'll go through that in a little bit. Um, so the next thing we have here is only creating one ad variation and not using extensions is another error I see commonly. So we're in our ad group here, promote your business. So every keyword is, you know, promote your business, how to promote your business, how to promote your business online, uh, you know, different things like that. So we have three different ads here. So we have how to promote your business, free online marketing ebook, ways to promote your business, free online marketing ebook, free online marketing ebook, how to promote your business. So all very similar ads. Um, the copy at the bottom is all the same, but what we're doing right now is we're able to kind of test, you know, which ads people are going to interact with the most. So once we start getting more data here for clicks, impressions, our click-through rate, and really what's driving conversions, Google can start optimizing your ads. So let's just say we have these three ads running, and this one with free online marketing ebook as the first headline outperforms these two by a mile. What I can do is pause these two ads and create a new one, a variation on this ad that's very similar. Maybe I change it to, you know, free online marketing ebook, uh, promoting your business for growth, something like that. And just change me. I could even change down here a little bit. You could just keep optimizing your ads as you go. So one of the problems is if you only create this one ad, then Google can't really optimize anything. Uh, they can't say, okay, these ads stink and this ad is good. Um, because if you only have one ad, they don't know if it's, if it's good or bad. They don't know, you know, if it's better than an alternative because you only gave them one ad to test. Um, so along with that is ad extensions. So if we come over here to extensions, you can see uh, we have a couple here for site links and uh, call out extensions, but we have to add more here. But what you want to do is click on the plus here. So they have site link extensions. You can actually show different links on your website and send people to relevant pages. Call out extensions, you can kind of show some of the some of the unique offers you have, some of the selling points you have. Structured snippets allows you to show different types of things you offer, all sorts of things like that. Um, call extensions, obviously phone calls. Message, a lot of people to send a text message directly to you. Location can show the actual location of your business. Affiliate location is just, you know, same thing as location, but if you have separate locations as well. Price extension, so you could show a specific price for your product services. Uh, you know, if you're a plumber that offers you know, a service for $250, you could put it on there. So $250, you know, show up fee or whatever it is. App extension. So if you have a mobile app on 
uh, mobile devices when people search for your business you can actually show your app so people download your app and promotion extension if you have a special offer a limited offer you can show that promotion there as well so a ton of different ad extensions to choose from and just to show you an example so if we come into Google I searched marketing software here you can see different ads so this one is just headline second headline uh, URL and then one line of description if you come down to acton.com they have you know kind of a similar headline here and then they have their description right here are call out extension so great service and support quick online quotes competitive pricing and services is a structured snippet so inbound marketing marketing automation outbound marketing so just all the different things they can offer um, I'm guessing all these have ad extensions on their ads but they only show for certain searches and sometimes when you're in the top position you get a bunch of ad extensions sometimes when you're in the bottom position you get no ad extension so it's just they kind of Google's kind of constantly testing but your ultimate goal is create multiple ads create multiple ad extensions and allow Google to keep testing until you can optimize and find you know the results that you're looking for so last but not least is the ultimate like people not understanding the goal of AdWords is probably the biggest mistake I make the goal of AdWords is to optimize for a conversion and to get your bidding strategy to the point where you've tested everything you can test and then you can switch to a target CPA or target return on ad spend bidding strategy so you can start your campaign with these bidding strategies but the problem is Google's not going to be able to test as much as they want to test so that's why I love using manual CPC because what I do is I try to test for about 30 days different keywords uh, I have multiple ads in each ad group and really anything that I can find that any keyword I can find that that's any what relevant to what I'm offering I use manual CPC and then I set bids based on what I see in the keyword planner um, and then my whole goal for the next month is to drive conversions and once I get a certain amount of conversions um, the best practice is 15 conversions in a 30-day period I don't think they still have that stipulation but once you have 15 conversions in a 30-day period uh, switching to target TPA or target return on ad spend will make it much easier for you to to allow Google to just keep your campaigns optimized and just use the data that you've given them so that they can keep optimizing and driving you conversions your goal with Google AdWords is to give them data about your business and for them to optimize your advertising campaigns the biggest mistake that people make is they come in here they don't use organized ad groups they don't use great keywords they only target broad keywords they use one ad per ad group they're not tar they're not optimizing for conversions they're just driving traffic to their website they don't have everything set up the way it needs to be set up and they don't know why things aren't working they don't know you know where the error is or what the error is and usually it's uh, several errors sometimes it's just someone created a campaign search network with display select and you know their their campaigns kinda gone off the rails so your goal is to come in here test so you're optimizing for a specific goal you might not have a positive return on investment for the first three four months um, sometimes you spend you know two three thousand dollars testing Google AdWords before you can finally say okay this is what's working for me so this is where we're gonna put our budget and that's the problem most advertisers have is they're either unable or unwilling to test um, so the more you can test the more you can uh, kind of give Google to learn and understand about your business um, so that Google can kind of get to the point where they say okay we can send you you know target CPA or let's just say we can send you target CPA a new acquisition for five dollars a piece every single time so you come into your target CPA you do it for five dollars a piece and for that entire month Google's gonna send you conversions at five dollars a piece or less so a lot of different uh, a lot of different things you can do once you start getting giving data to Google and the top advertisers in Google AdWords like the competitive advantage they have on everyone else is understanding their data and testing and optimizing for years and years so when you're just starting you start behind them but eventually you want to catch up to them by testing what works for your business and continuously optimizing your business so if you only have one landing page for example that can be a huge issue um, if you're only creating one ad that could be a huge issue if you don't have organized ad groups that could be a huge issue so just kind of continuously optimizing is really one of you where you want to get to um, and to get started we recommend watching our Google AdWords tutorial it should help you uh, create your first campaign avoid some of these mistakes that we're showing here because we kind of go through you know the step-by-step -step process that we use when we create new campaigns so it's a lot to learn in Google AdWords it's hard to go through each and every mistake that people make I probably missed out on some some huge mistakes honestly so um, if if you have any questions if you're having trouble with your own campaigns leave them in the in the comments of course make sure you watch our tutorials we'll have a few in our video description that we recommend watching um, if you haven't and uh, make sure you subscribe to our channel uh, thanks for watching our video today